Okay, um, I'm here to talk to you about this project, which is a collaboration between the University of Guelph and the University of Montreal. So for this talk, I'm going to be focusing on the second objective, which is the one I'm working on for my master's thesis. So assessment of sanitation procedures on pathogen prevalence in commercial broiler barns in Ontario, Canada is what um, we're going to be focusing on. So to give you a little bit of background information into why we are doing this research and the objective is because there is very minimal scientific evidence that is currently available to support the protocols that are given uh, by the chicken farmers of Ontario to the producers on how exactly they want them to clean their barns. So as it stands currently, producers are required to remove the litter and at least do a dry clean after every single flock and then they have to disinfect the whole barn at least once per year. So the objective of our study is to determine how pathogen loads are affected by the three different sanitation procedures that are currently recommended by the poultry industry. So in order to do this, we have conveniently enrolled 36 barns across Ontario and have asked the producer to clean the barn whichever way they see fit. This will either be a dry cleaning only, a wet cleaning, or a full disinfection. In order to get a good representation of how these bacterial loads are affected, we take four different samples per floor at three different time intervals. We have a baseline, which is taken immediately after the litter has been removed, then a two-day post-sanitation, and finally a six-day post-sanitation. These samples are collected from randomly selected one meter squared areas using a DE neutralizing sponge, and the samples are then sent to the lab where the E. coli is quantified and salmonella and clostridium perfringens are determined to be either present or absent. If salmonella is found, it'll further be serotyped. So since this is an ongoing project, I'm going to be presenting preliminary data from the first 17 barns. Uh, this is going to include seven dry cleaning and eight disinfection. We have chosen to exclude the wet cleaning group because only two producers have actually conducted a wet cleaning, so the data appeared very skewed. So just to orient you on the graph, we have the y-axis is the average number of E. coli counts. On the uh, x-axis, we have the um, rest period. So the zero day is our baseline, two day and six day post sanitation. Then the blue color is going to represent the concrete floors and the brownish color is uh, our wooden floors. The lighter the shade means it's dry cleaning and the darker the shade means it's disinfection. So as you can see on this graph, the dry cleaning group, we can see that there is a decrease in counts over time when you compare it to the initial baseline at zero days. If we compare the different flooring types, we notice that there is also a decrease um, as time go on, goes on and it seems to be a bit greater on the concrete floors. If we are to look at the disinfection group, we can notice that there is also an overall decrease as time goes on in comparison to the um, baseline and it's much more noticeable on the concrete floors. So if we were to compare the uh, disinfection and the dry cleaning group, it would appear that if we disinfect a concrete floor, it's more uh, effective at reducing E. coli and then if we did a dry cleaning on the wet uh, wooden floors, it would be more effective. So this is the Clostridium perfringens. So now on the y-axis we have the percent of positive swabs found. So looking at the dry cleaning group, we can see that both the concrete and the wooden floors have increased slightly in re relevance to their baseline sample. If we were to dr directly compare wood and concrete floors, we can see that the concrete floors had a higher number of positive samples after the six days ha had been passed. In the disinfection group, we had a decrease in positive samples as time went on, and this decrease is more noticeable on the concrete floors. So from these results, it would appear that disinfection and dry cleaning is about equally as effective on the wooden floors, whereas a disinfection on the concrete floor is more effective. Finally, we have salmonella. So we can see that there is a decrease as time goes on from the baseline on both the uh, dry cleaning group and the disinfection group. And for both groups, it would, it would appear that the decrease is about equal on the concrete and wooden floors. So again, if we were to compare all, three, uh, all two of these methods, it would appear, appear that the dry cleaning was a little bit more effective on the concrete floor, and the dry and disinfection is about equal on the wooden floor. So further testing on the E. coli and salmonella um, 
isolates, or sorry, E. coli and Clostridium isolates is going to be conducted in the upcoming months. So we're testing the E. coli for uh, quad E delta 1 and sub, sub E genes, which are associated with resistance to quaternary ammonium compounds. And Clostridium perfringens will be tested for the NET B gene, which is associated with necrotic enteritis. And finally, once all the data is in, we will be doing mixed regression models to find association between the presence and concentration of the organisms, the sanitation procedure, flooring type, respirate, and other factors, as well as between disinfectant use and antimicrobial resistance. And finally, I would like to thank my funding agencies that are um, helping for the Guelph objective, uh, my advisory committee, and thank you all for listening, and I welcome any questions. <laughs>